The Asian citrus psyllid arrived in California in about 2008. In a fairly short amount of time, the area that was being covered was no longer feasible for uh, control using chemical strategies. The California Department of Food and Agriculture and uh, all the grower commodities and the Citrus Research Board all decided to hand over the responsibility of managing Asian citrus psyllid to the biological control group in urban areas. The collaboration of the multiple entities that are involved in integrated pest management and specifically biological control has just been huge. University of California, California Department of Food and Agriculture, the Citrus Research Board, and others. The intention was to to have a group that would oversee and divide up the responsibilities for this big project. The biological control program targeting Asian citrus psyllid started in 2010 when we went to Pakistan to look for natural enemies of this pest. That is part of the home range or the area of origin for the pest and it has a good climate match. So we went to Pakistan six times over a three and a half year period. And then each time when he came back, we uh, kept small populations of each location where he went isolated. So the parasitoid that we brought back from Pakistan, Tamarixia radiata, established quickly and widely throughout Southern California. And the data that we've collected suggests that Asian citrus psyllid numbers have dropped by about 70% since we started the program. It's the only control measure that works 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year with no human assistance. And we developed a large scale production facility. Our uh, primary responsibility is to rear um, the biological control agent. The only way we can do that is to rear it on the Asian citrus psyllid. And the only way we can rear them is rear rearing them on citrus plants. So curry leaf is a relative of citrus. And it's also the primary host plant used in greenhouse production of Tamarixia radiata. And we've also started planting it in the field for use in field cages. Uh, we basically use um, uh, six to nine plants in each cage. We'll place these plants in a cage and then we will uh, add the Asian citrus psyllid. Those insects will grow on the plants and uh, reproduce on the plants and uh, the offspring will grow up. And once the offspring reach fourth to fifth instar nymphs, we then release the beneficial insects, the parasitoids. Those females find a cluster or a colony of Asian citrus psyllid nymphs. She lands, then she will lay her eggs inside those nymphs. Those eggs hatch, and then the wasp larva, kind of looks like a little fly maggot, starts eating the inside of the psyllid. So basically it gets eaten from the inside out. And when that parasitoid larva finishes its development, it pupates, just like a butterfly does, and it pupates inside the empty shell of that Asian citrus psyllid. They will have pupated and they will actually have uh, developed into adults and we'll see them flying around inside the cages. My crew then collect those insects up uh, and then within the next four or five days they'll be released in Southern California. In the field cages system we use grown-up trees, we prune them and then they are covered with insect proof cages and once the tree begins to produce a new flush, the Asian citrus psyllid adult will lay eggs on them. So we release our greenhouse rear HLV free ACP in, inside these cages. This ACP will lay eggs, will develop into nymphs in, on those trees, and then we release Tamarixia. And those genetically diverse Tamarixia are bred inside these cages, and they turn the ACP nymphs into mommage. And once those mommage are formed, then we prune the branches, pack them up, transport it back to the lab. So what we do here in the lab is the final stages of the insect collection. What I have here is a Tamarixia emergence storm. So what we'll do is we'll uh, get an aspirator. We connect these to a vacuum pump machine and we'll use these and we'll collect the Tamarixia out of the dorms and count them as we go. Uh, and then we give them to CDFA to do their planned releases. And what that involves is identifying a grid pattern in the city, identifying individual citrus plants that we release the beneficial insects into, and doing repeated releases uh, um, on a pretty much a monthly basis so that it persists in the environment and controls the Asian citrus psyllid uh, as the Asian citrus psyllid cycles in population throughout the year. Now, it won't completely eliminate Asian citrus psyllid from these areas, but what it does is it can regulate the population, keep it low, 
and we think we can help slow the spread of psyllid out of these areas so it won't uh, move into commercial areas and spread further in the state. When I first came here in California to work on ACP, I was told that within six months, ACP will be everywhere as it was the case in Florida, but it has been more than eight years. HLB is found only in a very limited area. The Citrus Research Board was really well organized, highly devoted and extremely supportive in terms of personnel and finances for making sure that this Asian Citrus Psyllid IPM program had the best possible chance of success. This united front that the Citrus Research Board pulled together under the auspices and part of the Biocontrol Task Force has really helped push control of the psyllid and lessen greatly the reliance on pesticides, especially in urban areas which interface with commercial citrus production areas. And I just think it was an outstanding effort which has had a really big impact and will probably contribute significantly to the longevity and economic profitability of citrus production in California.